I can't believe you said that. Now, at first, this story is pretty comical, but it takes a very scary turn for the worse. For context, I'm a 20-year-old woman, I'm quite short, just over 5 feet and about 140 pounds. I look a bit rough, but I'm generally a very kind person. I live about an hour away from my best friend and hometown. I often come down to visit though. My best friend, Anita, and I spent the whole day together and about 2am in the morning, we decided to stop by a 24-hour diner. We were tired and hungry and just wanted to have a quiet meal before heading to her house to sleep. The diner was packed, but that's not, not very unusual. We're both seated at a booth and I'm excited to get a cup of shitty coffee. After we ordered our drinks, a man in his mid-fifties, sitting behind us, started playing videos and music very loudly from his phone. He's your classic patriotic jean jacket, jean shirt, and jean slacks wearing guy. Not only was his phone loud, the quality was dreadful. It sounded like nails on a chalkboard and I already had a headache. He finished his video just as our coffee came. I was super relieved. Until he started playing another video. I turned around and politely asked if he could use some headphones or at least turn the volume down. He said no and that he would stop playing the videos when the large family in the center of the diner shut their dirty mouths. The family he was referring to was Hispanic. They were not being loud. But conversation in a family of 10 can get a bit loud. Of course, his videos were much louder and abrasive than the family. I asked him what was bothering him about the family. He didn't respond, so I asked him the question I really wanted to know. What? Are you racist or something? Without answering, he snorted and played another video. I again asked him to please stop. I was getting really irritated and so was my best friend. Anita is part Hispanic, so I know she was getting uncomfortable. After about 10 loud and annoying minutes, I turned around and told him to turn off his fucking phone. I told him he was in a public place and that he was being incredibly rude. He stated he was watching a video about troops coming home. I stated I didn't give a flying fuck about the contents of the video, it's loud, and I have a bad headache. I can't believe you just said that, he said over and over. He started to play purposely loud and irritating sounds on his videos. I'd had enough and couldn't even stomach my food anymore, so I boxed it up. As we were paying our check, the man left the building. I was a bit irritated at just that, leaving when we were after he had successfully pissed me off. Anita and I decide to have a smoke before we take off, so we head outside to the designated smoking area. We are about halfway done, laughing and talking smack on the dude, when out of the corner he just appeared. Anita and I are a little stunned. We thought he left, but he was watching us the whole time. I noticed he had his hand in his jacket pocket, and it looked like he was grabbing onto something. He didn't say anything, he just stared. I asked him if he needed anything. He pulled out a pocket knife. I reached quickly in my purse and pulled out a pink taser. I pressed the button as a warning, the electric sound loud and threatening. He immediately fled, and Anita and I immediately fled to my car and peeled out of there. We never did call the cops or anything like that. We just went home and slept. We talked about it a lot the following days. It just seemed kind of like a big joke. I'm just glad I was able to protect myself and my best friend. The Two Men in the Restaurant When I was 16 years old, my parents and I moved to Florida, and I was soon hired at an Italian restaurant as a busboy. On my very first night, I was busy cleaning tables in the dining area when I was motioned by a table. At the table were two men, I would say they were both in their late thirties dressed in fairly typical middle class guys. Earlier when I would pass by their table, 
I, just, I noticed that they were sitting very still without conversation and didn't seem very animated. Anyways, I go to their table as requested. The man who motioned me gestured to lean closer to him. I assumed he wanted to ask me to get his server or needed something. So I bent slightly forward and he asked me this question softly. Have you ever had your initials carved into your forehead? In hindsight, I should have said something snarky like, well, not that I can remember, or does it look like it? But I was too taken aback by such a random and weird question. I know I can be clueless when it comes to social cues or jokes, so I chuckled awkwardly and searched his face for any sign of humor. But all I got was a blank stare. His friend and partner was silent and didn't even look at me. I think I shook my head and walked away, completely baffled. I walked into the kitchen and found the server of that table. I told her what happened and asked what was wrong with those guys. Oh yeah, I don't know, but they're fucking weird. Regardless, I continued my duties and cleaned tables. I tried avoiding that table, but the men remained there for quite a while, just as inanimate as before. I don't even recall them eating anything. Maybe they did when I was working around the restaurant. When I was cleaning a table near them, the same man motioned me over once again. I, I was torn. I really did not want to repeat that same experience, but I was afraid to say no to a customer. It was my first night on the job, and I didn't want a customer to complain to my manager saying I ignored them. So I went over to the table. Again, he wanted me to lean close so he could tell me something. I don't know why I did, he said. Have you ever had two men pin you down, grabbed your throat, and- But that was it. That's all I gave him. I immediately proceeded to nope right the fuck away from those guys. I'm a gay man, but nothing about this proposition seemed hot or sexually suggestive, like they wanted to hook up. It all felt very wrong to me. I'm not sure if they were really high on something, but the flat, deadbeat tone of his voice and their blank stares really unsettled me. I went immediately to the general manager, who kind of shrugged it off. I worked until 2am in the morning, and as ridiculous as it sounds, I had to ask the bartender just to watch me get back to my car safely in the dark parking lot. I, I tell a lot of people this story. And while it is bizarre and funny when, when I explain it, I was disturbed by the encounter that evening. It was a pretty bad first impression of Florida. Creepy creeper creeping me. Diner dude. So, this is my first post on Reddit ever. So I hope I'm doing this correctly. I've had multiple creepy encounters in my life and I'm sure I'll post another, but this one was by far the creepiest. It happened several years ago when I was 17 years old. I am 22 now. At the time, I lived in a suburban neighborhood with my mother who was rarely home. I worked part-time after school and weekends at a diner. At work, we had quite a few regulars that, you guessed it, came in regularly. But there was this one guy in particular that was different from the rest. He was young, late 20s at the most, tall, lanky, and had a voice, I hate to describe it this way, that seemed very feminine. His name was Jared, and he recently had started coming in every Tuesday night. It only took a couple of weeks for me to become friends with Jared. He was friendly, hilarious, and I thought he was quite eccentric, as am I, so we got along really well. There were a few things that struck me as odd. Firstly, he always making up these stories about himself that were difficult to believe. Secondly, he would come into the diner in the late afternoon and stay there with us until we were turning the lights off. Sometimes I wouldn't get off until 11 p.m. at night or so when my entire town was basically shut down and dark. I put all my suspicions away at the time because Jared was a super cool dude. It all got weird when I got my first iPhone. Jared. Jared was showing me how to do everything. 
how to save numbers, make calls, how to download apps. He even downloaded a few for me to get me started. I thought nothing of it. And then he started to text me like crazy. It was all normal stuff at first. He would text me about the weather, about his favorite TV shows, and then he started to send me his iPhone photography photos he said he took of his best friend. I got a little weirded out at that point, because the photos weren't ones he'd taken. They were very obviously pictures that were saved from the internet. Not to mention, the backdrop for his best friend was unrealistic for the area that we lived in. I believe I texted him something along the lines of, You didn't take those, lol. And that's when he started to flip out on me. He started calling me all sorts of awful names, and started to cuss at me, and told me that I was the untrustworthy one, not him. I, I was so baffled. I decided to just not text him back and talk to him about it that next week on Tuesday when he came in. Well, he ended up coming in the next night. I figured he was going to, because a server had told me he called a restaurant around lunchtime to see if I would be working that night. He apologized, told me that he was out of line, and we moved on. After a seemingly normal evening with him at the diner, I decided to ask Jared if he was single, because I had this awesome friend Anthony that I thought he should meet. I was under the impression that he was gay, because of the way he talked about his exes and whatnot. They sounded like they'd be dudes. Jared immediately flipped out at me, yelling, I'm not gay! I like women! Why does everyone think I'm gay? I completely froze. I was so upset with myself that I would falsely assume something so private, and I felt so guilty. Jared had already stormed out, but I texted him shortly after, telling him how sorry I was. That evening, as I was laying in bed reading a magazine, I got a response from Jared. The text simply read, Where are you? I didn't know how to respond. A. Revealing I was alone at my house. And B. Giving him reason to try and come over to my house. So I didn't respond. I was hoping to play it off in the morning like I fell asleep. He then texted me again saying, Never mind. You're at home. I immediately called my boyfriend at the time and asked him if he would come over and stay the night with me, which he promptly did. I didn't tell him why I needed him to come over, and I didn't tell him that I had a creepy creeper creeping me. I blocked Jared's number the next day. I asked my manager not to let anyone give out my personal schedule to anyone who asked or called, and I stopped working Tuesdays. About a week went by before I had a weird unsaved number text me. You're mine. I don't care about your boyfriend. It took me less than a second to realize that Jared had made a new number to talk to me. He started to flood my phone with derogatory comments about me, graphic stories of all the things he wanted to do to me, pictures of body parts I didn't care to see, and threats to get rid of the people I cared about to see that he was all I had. He basically went to stalker level 600, and I note the situation super hard. I blocked that number and switched to weekend day shifts only. I told my boyfriend about the situation, and he started to stay with me regularly. I thought I'd taken care of the situation, until I started to see Jared in random places. I would see him just driving out of the parking lot after I get off work. I would see him driving in the distance while I was getting gas. Everywhere I looked, it looked like he was there too. Of course, I ruled it off as paranoia, right? One night, I was home alone, waiting for my boyfriend to get off work and come stay with me. I got a text from an unsaved number that read, Hey stranger, you home? I then got a few more that led me to believe that he was there too. I ever so sneakily peeked through my curtains in my main hallway to see Jared's car parked outside my house. I started to psycho dial my boyfriend until I realized he was pulling up in the driveway, passing Jared on the street. 
I took my phone to my carrier and had them give me a new number and make it so no unsaved number could text me. The guy who was helping me asked if I also wanted to deactivate the GPS tracker that was set on my phone. I, uh, I was completely dumbfounded that Jared had downloaded an app that traced my every move. I could see Jared on the map too, and he had refreshed my location just 14 minutes ago. I had, I had Jared banned from the diner after that, and took a mini leave from work until I finished my semester. My mother and I moved into an apartment on the other side of town that summer. One of the biggest fears is that he never stopped following me, and I just don't know about it yet. So, creepy creeper Jared, please let's not meet ever again. Waffle House Weirdos To preface, I was about 25 years old when this occurred. My boyfriend and I had been out visiting with friends, and we left their house late, around 2am. Now, I've never been much of a drinker, so I did the driving. On our way back, we decided to call in some omelets from the Waffle House, which is the only place where one can get takeout in the super early mornings. So, we arrived at the Waffle House and I went inside to pick up our orders. As I was paying for the order, a young man to my left began pacing and mumbling angrily, muttering something I could not understand. I didn't think much of it, since most diner patrons were either drunk or truck drivers at that time of day. When I collected the food and turned to leave, I noticed a young woman outside of the diner. She too was angrily pacing back and forth, grimacing and cursing. The young man followed me out into the parking lot. I sidestepped the woman to get to my car. The young man had gotten into another car, and the young woman sat in the passenger seat. Whatever I thought, tweakers. As I put my car into reverse, the car with the two tweakers screeched to a halt behind my car, pinning us in the parking spot. Within seconds, the man was knocking ferociously on my driver's side window and yelling at me. My boyfriend and I exchanged what the fuck glances. I unrolled the car window about an inch. The conversation went something like this. You stole my girlfriend's wallet, and you better give it fucking back right now. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. I have my own wallet, and that's it. You fucking stole it from the counter, and we're getting it back one fucking way or another. Dude, I didn't steal shit. Move your car, and I I I'm going to back into it. You give it to me right now, or give me yours, or your fucking dead. I rolled up the window and backed my car up a few inches. He continued to scream at me through the window, then leapt back into his car with his girlfriend. They peeled backwards and I exited the parking lot. At that point, my boyfriend and I were amused more than anything else, and we re-entered the highway. Just then, we heard the same car roar up behind us. The man was driving like an absolute maniac to dodge other cars traffic lights and stop signs until he got so close to us that their car nearly rammed our back bumper. I weaved in and out of the sparse traffic as safely as I could in an attempt to throw them off of our route. Each time, he'd managed to pull behind us again. He clicked his headlights on and off the bright setting. He leaned on the horn inside our car. It was blinding and deafening. I sure as hell wasn't going home so that this tweaked, unhinged couple would know where we lived. I swear it was almost like I could hear him still screaming, even over the blaring car horn. My boyfriend and I didn't do much talking, as I suppose we were both shocked and trying to figure out what to do. Fuck this, I told him. We're going to the police station. I doubled back, the car still bearing down on us. When I pulled into the police station, they followed. I locked my car doors, picked up my cell, and began to ring the station, because I sure as shit wasn't going to get out of my car. 
The man practically ran out of his car and up to my window, again banging and yelling. I'd gone way beyond concerned and scared to absolutely pissed. We want our goddamn money! Yo, leave me the fuck alone! I'll let the fucking cops search me for your girlfriend's fucking wallet! The man was silent. I'm on the phone with the cops right now. Um, if you don't have it, I guess you don't have it. He then sprinted back to his car and his sour-faced girlfriend and him burned rubber out of there. I stayed in the police station's parking lot for a while, talking to the cops on duty. When we finally left at about 3.30 a.m., I still made several loops through town before eventually heading home, arriving at 4. Legally, nothing came of the incident. I had no idea what the couple's names were, nor did I get a license plate number. We gave the cops descriptions of their physical appearances and vehicle, but they seemed far more interested in making sure I wasn't drunk. I'm fairly certain that the maniac couple was pulling a strong arm con job, or else they were genuinely convinced that I had mysteriously and magically stolen the girl's wallet. And it was some kind of drugs that was responsible for the bizarre severity of their behavior. Anyways, fuck those assholes. My omelets were cold and rubbery by the time I got home.